Let me add some remarks on the European Union and the European crisis. First of all, I think it is important to state that the European integration was never a post-nationalist concept. It was always evolving around the nation-state, it was always around maintaining the nation-state, and only a few people uh, went honestly beyond this. Now, as such, still, if we look at the current situation, the crisis of the European Union has to be seen as crisis of globalization, meaning the, the if you want, structurally two dimensions of the European Union. On the one hand, the entity uh, of nation-states, and on the other hand, the nation-states themselves have to redefine their role and their position uh, in the global world order. Now, it is interesting uh, to see in this light again at the current discussion in the UK, namely the Brexit. Uh, it did not really replace the earlier discussion on the Grexit. The Grexit was about pushing one country out of the European Union uh, due to different considerations. And to be honest, I don't think that it ever was a serious matter. The Brexit if serious or not, is different in so far that it is now about a country leaving the European Union, intending, discussing if they want to leave. So the direction of the exit is different. In the one case, from the Union pushing a country out, in the other case, the one country uh, pulling out leaving. Uh, the Brexit is currently, of course, the major thing. Um, at the same time, it has to be seen in the wider context, for instance, uh, in connection with discussions of the Nexit, the Svexit, meaning the, the Netherlands and the Swedish discussing or considering under certain conditions as well to leave the European Union. It doesn't matter really if this is a serious thing or if it's just a political propaganda or whatsoever. It is at least possible to think about it. At the same time, we see the Scottish exit and the Catalan exit, meaning the Scottish, the Catalan and others. We have the same problem in Italy, uh, for instance, that the these uh, Parts, the regions within countries consider to possibly leave. Now, not the European Union, but their national framework. Um, what this would mean for the European Union is another question. But what we see overall is a general breakup of political entities that had been considered for a long time as stable and actually not only as stable, but uh, as deepening and intensifying uh, relationships, overcoming the old patterns of nation-states. Now, what is the background of this? Internally, we find an increasing inequality, we find increasing poverty, we find increasing the inability of the member states and their regional units to deal with uh, social challenges. It is a wide field, it's a complex field, uh, but it is a, an attempt, I think, to redefine uh, the, the class borders, the class division, and to regain national sovereignty, but sovereignty understood now in terms of legitimacy. This is especially necessary against the background that we have since now already some time, 
um, but increasingly important and increasingly virulent, um, the problem that the old cohesion, the not cohesiveness, but, but the old cohesion uh, was actually a factor that was imposed on the European Union as a matter of cohesion against, against something else, against the socialist countries. And this is a factor that doesn't exist anymore. And it's not only about the, the breakup of the socialist uh, regimes or the, the socialist parts of the world, but it is as well a matter of um, the global power relationships. China is not a factor that is strong enough at this stage uh, to fulfill this role as a scapegoat, as we have to be cohesion, uh, we, we have to develop cohesion against China. Russia is the same case, same case. Now, politically, this seems to be relatively simple, meaning we have these simple debates of, of who against whom, but there's much more to it. Namely, that we can say up to a certain point in history, we have some understanding of the Commonwealth of the European Union as, as it was uh, formulated in Lisbon, a cohesive block of the most competitive, but as well as the most social cohesive uh, region of the world. Leaving aside what, what the ideological dimension of it, of it was, but there was at least this understanding of uh, community, the old original name of the European uh, integration, the, the community orientation. Now this was a, a matter of something in common, and this was a matter of at least something in common in um, as a matter of, of, uh, of a public, uh, of an understanding of who and what this European uh, institutional system would be about. This is increasingly lost. On the one hand, as said, as a matter of the global power relationships, but at the same time, as a matter of the loss of uh, any kind of European society. As such, it doesn't exist anymore, leaving aside that it never really existed, but at least there is not anymore this, this vision of it could be some general aim. This, the, the other point of it is that social policy as such was and still is and is again increasingly a matter outside of the European project and regaining strength in the national dimension. On the one hand, we have the protection of the own national social policy systems and at the same time we have the, uh, the, the retreat on the national level. Um, again, kind of complex questions in, de in, in detail, but it is uh, exactly this process of uh, fortress building where the, the, the borders, the walls of the fortress are actually uh, kind of changing. We have literally the borders, the, 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 yeah, the, the walls, uh, of this fortress in Hungary being built up, but at the same time we have them be, being built up um, internally. Uh, the question, however, is I think a little bit deeper. Uh, looking at the geopolitical question, it is going hand in hand with what had been called the European dream and the end of it, the end of history and the actual re-emergence of history as a matter of redefining and regaining hegemony. 
essentially we can say the entire crisis, the entire debate today is about the anthroponomic system. Namely, how do we define ourselves, we as human beings, and in relation to, to nature. This is an important point that is only coming to the surface uh, by the crisis, but it is underlying and easily forgotten about all the other questions. Politically, it is not dealt with. Politically, it's neglect, uh, n a neglected area. And we are talking about the crisis since 2007 or 2008, whichever date we take. And we are talking about the negative effect of the crisis on the European Union. Easily we forget one very important point, namely that this negative effect of the crisis, or the negative crisis as such, was as well structurally caused by the European, itself, by the European Union itself, and importantly it was structurally used. The crisis was used as a model for the internal Uh, establishment of peripheries. We find this obviously in Greece, we find it in Spain, we find it in Ireland. Countries, Portugal as well, and uh, others, but the, the obvious use, positioning of countries as a periphery Uh, around the core, especially Germany. Not to forget, there is another dimension to this internal peripheralization, namely if we look at the social reforms, as they are called, uh, in actual fact retreat, measures of retreating, it's in uh, the, the Hartz IV system in Germany, It's the old age pension systems, it is the healthcare systems. All this explicitly not a matter of calculations of a rational in economic terms, but a matter of a redefinition of the hegemonic system. Schäuble, in the negotiations with Greece, was very clear about it. Uh, basically saying we are not interested in the economic rationale, we are not interested in the economic uh, consequences for the, for the population or for the country, we are interested in re-establishing the German hegemony. And German was the, the main actor here, but it was not just Germany. We see the same in, in France, in the close link and close, uh, increasingly close link, uh, France Germany. We see it as well in Britain. In short, somebody has to carry the burden of the world, somebody has to make it possible for the uh, center states, for the states of, of the center. Uh, to be what they are. Now there is this danger, ongoing danger, and again and again coming up as a danger, the, the problem that it is not about country against country, but we see especially with the younger, with the recent uh, proposals uh, in, in the center countries, that it is as well about a, a new approach there, using the overall crisis as means to increase inequality. Uh, I don't know the details at the stage right now, but Schäuble made some proposals, uh, some considerations uh, to cut back the old age pension system in Germany. Cut back means to cut it further back. Now, somebody has to carry the burden of this country, uh, of, of, of the world, uh, in terms of the hegemony. There is another point 
really when it comes to the European Union. I think we have difficulties to deal with it. Namely, it is the contradictory structure, the contradictory pattern of the entire institutional framework. Part of it is obviously a political uh, a strategy, a political project. And I just tried to show this um, with, a, with a differentiation within the Europe, uh, European Union. However, there is another part. And to understand it, to understand the relationship between them is probably very difficult in an overall perspective. We can see it in some details, but in, o in an overall perspective it's difficult. That's at least my experience from working within this or in, in the vicinity of this um, European Union institutional system. The European Union is burdened with the administrative orientation. As such, it in the in the daily work, in the guidance by the European Commission, it is not really a political project. It doesn't have any political visions, but it's simply an administrative administrative process. Integration as administration, and this means at the same time that we face always these diff uh, d differences between the different parts of the administration. Now, we should be honest enough to say that there are some people working in the institutions, even on a relatively high level, that are by no means uh, extremely reactionary or even conservative. They want to push something on, uh, forward on the agenda, they have, so to say, the, the best, uh, best will, uh, the best intentions. Um, and we could probably even uh, sign many of the proposals as such. But there is no as such. It is a contradictory system. And there is, for instance, the one DG arguing against the other, the one force within the institutional system uh, not being able to, to, to establish, to develop a coherent strategy. Um, this is difficult to analyze, not least because we don't have, usually we don't have the internal information. And if we get them, uh, we get them not necessarily in the written form of the entire program. I was once or twice surprised how it works, getting before the internet knew everything, uh, some discussion, some minutes of a council meeting. Uh, it was about a package deal where Great Britain actually said, uh, OK, we agreed to everything. But there is only one condition, you have to take the trade with Britain um, with meat, beef, out of this uh, package. This was the time when we had been discussing uh, med disease. The other occasion was uh, talking actually to a commissioner, um, and I believe that he was correct, that he didn't use it as an excuse. It was about a certain uh, policy area uh, in the area of, of single market and, and social services, uh, where the commissioner said, actually, it had been in my uh, part, part of my competencies, but it is not anymore, because the president of the commission said, it's not yours anymore, it's now on my, on my desk, and I'm dealing with it. So, it is sometimes a, a simple power game, simple meaning, um, actually kind of dictatorial. And there, of course, we have the difficulties really to define the, the clear relationship between the political 
process, the political vision uh, of the, the different political actors and the administrative system. Because even the commissioner uh, with his high political power uh, is not necessarily a sovereign political force. So I think this is uh, somewhat important to consider this wider field um, when it comes to the current situation as a matter of redefining the European Union, including accepting the contradictory process that possibly possibly leads to a final breakup. Thank you.